Let's talk PM interviews today. So, how many of you have ever felt this way before? Where you walk into an interview and then they ask, oh, so tell me about yourself. And then you'll be like, oh, I'd rather not. Because <laughs> I really want to get this job. Um, although it sounds funny, uh, what it really says is that you are not actually prepared for the interview. Because when they ask about, when they ask this question, it's not, oh, tell me like, you know, uh, about yourself, like anything that you want to. It's not that. They want to, they expect you to have a specific answer, right? So it all boils down to preparation. Um, so hopefully after tonight, you'll have more understanding of how to prepare for PM interviews. So, so yeah, let's get started. Hi, I'm Manjushan Adrajan. Um, as Ryan mentioned, I do work at Amazon currently. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about Amazon or product management interview specific to Amazon. That said, product management is, um, you know, a general concept anywhere you go. So the interview tips are going to be applicable to any company, right? So, uh, but I just wanted to give a little bit of introduction. Um, I did my master's at Carnegie Mellon University. Any CMU alums here? No, okay. Um, so prior to Amazon, I also worked at Groupon and Deloitte and so on and so forth. So this is a little bit of my employment history. Started off as an um, intern at Deloitte and then um, moved into data science at a startup, at a unicorn startup in Chicago. And then uh, transitioned into product management at Groupon in Seattle, which is down the street, pretty close. Um, and currently at Amazon. Any questions so far? Anyone wants to question my choices? <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, yeah, go ahead. So how was your transition from a data scientist to a product manager? Great question. That could take like an entire session by itself. <laughs> um, so hopefully I'll do another session on that. But uh, basically I was very proactive. I took a lot of projects internally at Groupon and uh, positioned myself as already a product manager without the title. And then once I proved myself, I officially got the title. So that's how it worked out. But I, I know that it's a, it's a topic that a lot of people are interested in, you know, transitioning internally and transitioning between roles. So um, hopefully I want to do that session at some point. So stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so this is just a generic interview structure for any PM interview. Generally, uh, at any company, you'll start off with the resume. Um, it could be, it doesn't have to be a traditional resume. It could just be LinkedIn. A lot of my interviews happen that way. Um, or it could be referrals and, you know, different ways of actually getting your foot into the door. And once you do that, then you typically you have a recruiter interview. Um, which is pretty straightforward. They will ask about, you know, some HR related questions and like um, your interests. And um, every company has their specific set of HR <coughs> slash recruiter questions that they ask. Um, so it'll be just that. And once you get past that, then you typically have a hiring manager interview on the phone. And um, some companies might do one or two interviews. Uh, most companies these days, recently from my personal experience, has just been one interview because people want to move fast. Um, but if you do have two interviews, then it might be with like a, a different team member or someone like, a, uh, like your stakeholder. They, they can interview you uh, other than the hiring manager. And then, and then you'll have uh, the final on-site interview where you might have four to six rounds. Um, of um, different product areas. So today we are not going to focus on the first two steps, which is how to actually get interview calls. That's a different topic. And uh, we're not going to talk about recruiter interview. Um, but we will talk about general um, topics and trends of questions that you might get at different tech companies uh, for hiring manager and on-site interview. So a little bit of uh, um, disclaimer again. I do have most of my experience in consumer product, which is B2C. Um, so most of my examples and 
you know, general interview trends will be around a B2C product. Um, if you are interested in B2B product, um, these might still be applicable, but it's not something that I have personally experience with. But, I, I'm, but like mostly the, um, the, the areas of interviews will be similar. It's just like the, uh, the competencies that you might be tested in might be you know, slightly different. Okay, so um, this is one of the interview structures that uh, some of the major tech companies follow, such as Facebook, Google. They follow uh, this exact structure, and it's a very um, standard structure. Uh, you know, any any product manager role, if they have like a generalist product manager role, then they always go through the structure. It starts off with two phone interviews. Uh, it could be the phone or video, depending on the company. Um, they're typically around 45 minutes long, and uh, they will ask you. They'll test you on your product sense, um, or some some companies might also call it product design. And in another interview, they will have a product execution round. So this is how it typically starts out. And uh, once you clear both those rounds, um, then you'll be invited on site. And uh, then you'll have three to, again, like four to six in, uh, rounds, or if it's Facebook, it's typically three rounds, um, where you'll be tested on product sense, product execution, and uh, leadership interview, which is which is basically behavioral, you know, just to understand if you have those leadership skills, if you can actually um, rally people around uh, your product idea, and if you can influence people in a positive way. So that is the leadership round. And then if you're interviewing with Google, then you also have an estimation round where um, how many golf balls fit inside uh, an airplane. That's like an example of an estimation question. So that is typically, you know, these days only Google does that. No one else asks you those questions anymore. Um, but uh, if you are preparing for Google, then you should definitely focus on that. This is just another interview structure. Uh, companies like Uber mostly do this type of structure where phone interviews are typically with the hiring manager. They ask about your past experience and they want to figure out if you have a mutual fit for the role that they are interviewing you for. And then they'll in invite you on site and you'll have uh, similar product design, execution and strategy um, rounds. And Uber does this specifically where they have a jam session. A anyone has ever interviewed with Uber or want to interview with Uber? Okay, so, so I will talk about it <laughs> since you're interested. Um, so jam session is where they give you a prompt ahead of time, <coughs> and they say that um, they give you a question or a problem that they are working on, uh, which is very relevant to Uber, and uh, they'll ask you to prepare uh, an answer for it. And when you go on site, you'll have like uh, another 45 minute round, just like other rounds, where you present the answer you already prepared at home. And you'll have two people sitting there, two interviewers as a panel, and they'll challenge you on your you know, answer, your assumptions and, and your recommendations, all of that. Um, you, the way you prepare for this jam session is just like <coughs> any other product design or execution, because the questions are you know, similar to a product design question. Um, it's just because they give you the question ahead of time, then you're expected to do a little bit more research because you have the time, so you have no excuse. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's how typically um, the interview uh, structures go for any of the top tech companies. Um, so this is what product sense or product design typically entails, right? So um, I tried to give examples from like different tech companies right there. Like if you are, uh, the first one says, design a product that connects doctors with patients. This, this could be any company, or this could be a company like Facebook who might want to get into that space. So they can ask you, okay, what are your, like how would you go about, if you were a PM at Facebook, how would you actually design that product? So that's, that's, a, that's an example. And then how will you improve Facebook Messenger? So that is uh, also product design because you are going to design a product so that FP Messenger is improved. 
So, it, so when we say product design, it doesn't have to be a brand new product. It can be an existing product, but the improvement has like a, a, a feature, a new feature that you develop. And then um, how would you keep drivers from leaving the Uber platform? That's, that's an Uber specific example where it, it sounds like a, uh, like a one word answer question, right? But it's not. You're actually are supposed to think about um, like the whole structure and give a framework. We'll talk about all of that. But that's, a, that's another form of product design question. And then if it is Google, then um, you know, they, they can say, imagine you work at Google's e-commerce business. The team is trying to enter into vending machine business. How will you design the product? Um, and then the last example is a very generic you know, experience. It's not digital. It's not software. But they can totally ask you that because they want to see how you think about these problems, right? Like how you logically structure the, your thoughts and come up with diff multiple solutions and then recommend something. So that's something that any can, anyone can ask. Typically, Google loves these questions, but it, you, know, you can get, the, get it from any company. So how do you answer these questions? So all these are like different types of, like I said, different uh, ways of asking the question, but ultimately it is a product design or testing a product sense question, uh, product sense. So how do you answer? Um, the number one tip, if you forget everything that I say today, just remember to use a framework when you are in a PM interview. Never forget to use a framework. And it always helps to actually state what your framework is when you start answering the question so that you internally are able to think in that framework so that your answer is more structured. And also the interviewer knows what to expect. They can follow your answer and they can see what your thought process is and where you're going with what you're saying. So don't forget to use a framework. Um, there are multiple frameworks available online. I will talk about different resources that are available to actually prepare. But um, Circles is a very, very popular framework, um, which is um, uh, designed by Lewis Lin. He, he's a very popular uh, person in this space, product management space. He has written multiple books about it. He was a product manager himself. So Circles is a very good, useful framework. Um, and it's very easy to remember, right? Circles. It's very easy to remember when you're in an interview. Um, so if Circles is basically an acronym. Like it says, first comprehend the situation, um, which basically means clarify what the interviewer is asking and understand what uh, uh, the question is about and ask questions if you need to so that you exactly understand what the situation they're presenting to you is. And um, then you move on to, once you have a good idea and you agree with the interviewer on um, you know, what you're going to answer about. So for example, if, we, if you're designing a product for uh, Facebook Messenger, or like, let's take the doctors and patients thing. So you, you'll ask multiple clarifying questions. And then you can, one uh, clarifying question you can ask is, do you want me to design this for Facebook? Or do you want me to design a standalone app? Or do you want me to think outside of digital? So that's, that's comprehending the situation, right? Because they just said, like, design something to connect doctors with patients. You can do it in multiple ways. You can design a feature on Facebook, but you, or you can also design a brand new mobile app, or you can like design a physical device or like you know something physical tangible that you can uh, that connects doctors to patients so that that falls under comprehending the situation so that the interviewer also knows um, where you're going with it and uh, then the second step is identify customer probably the most important step because everything a product manager does is uh, basically for the customer, right? We have to put ourselves in the customer's shoes and we have to be obsessed about the customers, all that good stuff. So identify who the customer is 
because for any product, there might be multiple customers, and the final product you end up designing will be completely different based on which customer you choose. And if you don't state that ahead of time, then the interviewer will be like, okay, who, who's going to use this, right? And it also helps you narrow down the scope because the, these questions, these product design questions are very broad, typically by design. So it's uh, uh, this structure or this framework helps you narrow down your scope, which you have to do when you're a product manager anyway. Like in your day-to-day -day job, your, you know, your job entails narrowing down your scope and, uh, um, and making it easier and simple so that you design something useful to a particular customer. So that's what you're doing when you identify the customer. It could be, again, you know, it's, it's your imagination and it's your uh, solution, so you can choose any customer you want, but always justify what you're saying. So if you say that, um, in, again, doctors to patients, you can design it for uh, any type of patient, right? Uh, there's multiple different segments you can choose, like you can choose like, um, a patient with uh, a chronic disease or a patient with um, like a mental wellness issue or, uh, or a patient um, who, want, who just wants to, who doesn't have any chronic issues, but who just wants to uh, find a good doctor in their area. So the type of, like the rest of your answer depends on who that person is, who that uh, patient is. So identify that and justify why you're choosing that. Um, in that example, if you, if you clarified with uh, the interviewer that you are designing it for Facebook, then your uh, customer has to be someone who uses Facebook. So then think about, okay, who uses Facebook? Who are the Facebook users typically? And what kind of patients are they? And what kind of patients will want to uh, use this feature, right? So your, your uh, customer persona depends on the previous step like you know what situation you're solving for um, and then um, then you move on to the next step where you report the customer needs um, again it's uh, something that you do as a PM day in and day out where you are always identifying your customer pain points so that's what you're doing at that step once you know who your customer is list down their pain points and write them down um, if it's an on-site interview write them down even if it's a video interview I recommend having a whiteboard next to you so that the interviewer is looking at you know your what you're writing it's always very useful um, so write down your customer pain points a list of all their pain points and then the next step cut through prioritization prioritization is like the most important skill for any product manager and uh, this is a step where you can um, show that skill to to the interviewer so cut through the prioritization and um, pick, um, it doesn't have to be one pain point. It again depends on the question, depends on you know, the time you have, all that. But uh, pick, pick a couple of pain points so that you can, uh, you can come up with you know, a good solution rather than one generic solution that doesn't solve the problem that well. So then once you have that uh, pain point figured out, then you list your solutions. Uh, again, this is, this is also another uh, place where you can show your PM skills, where any, PM, any good PM has multiple solutions. They, they don't just propose one solution and they're not married to it. Because uh, as a PM, you do have access to multiple sources of data, right? And uh, you also have access to multiple people in your organization who are giving you ideas. Um, but it's not your job to like just say this is the solution and this is what I'm going to implement. Um, it's your job to think about multiple solutions that are feasible, that are that solve your customer problem, and uh, that solve the right customer's problem. But it, but it but it is very important to have more than one solution so that ultimately you pick the best one based on different factors that come in. So uh, list multiple solutions. You, you, know, you can list like three solutions. It doesn't have to be 50. And then, um, then you evaluate trade-offs. So trade-offs is where you, know, you will talk about, um, in, in real world, trade-offs come from the tech team, from the business team, from UX. 
and from legal, you know, trade-offs can come from uh, sources, fr you know, from different uh, aspects of your business. But in the interview setting, you don't have that, right? So you just evaluate trade-offs based on, uh, again, the customer, based on what you think will be the most efficient solution. So you can uh, uh, make assumptions, right? You can say that, oh, these, uh, among these three solutions, I feel like um, this would be a high-tech effort, and this will be a medium-tech effort. This one will be a low-tech effort. Uh, but this will have the highest uh, impact on the customer. And this will have a medium impact. So based on this um, matrix, I'm, uh, this is the matrix of my trade-offs, right? So again, you can choose like an ROI approach, which I just described, or you can choose like uh, um, the reach approach. If I choose this solution, then it will reach the most number of customers. So you can choose any approach you want, but just state those trade-offs and like structure them also, like you know, draw them out or write them out in a clear way so that your interviewer understands. And once you evaluate your trade-offs, um, you should pick a solution from the list of solutions. And then once you have that, then you basically say, this is what I'm going to build for the doctors and patients. Um, let's assume you've developed a feature, right, which lets Facebook users go and like choose from a list of doctors based on their uh, uh, illness. So in the summary, you can, uh, if you have enough time, then you can just draw up a very rough wireframe and show it that this is what it's going to look like. Um, that's always super helpful. Or you can just talk through what your solution is and just tie it back to the customer. Always tie it back to the customer so that both of you are on the same page that, hey, like this was the customer and this is how it will help them. Yes, so that's, that's circles. <laughs> I spoke a lot. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, behavioral answers, I think they say, try to keep it within two to four minutes. Yeah. Obviously more yeah. Than that, so. Yeah. yeah. So if you do uh, the phone interviews, where I mentioned earlier that you'll have one product sense and one product execution, you get 45 minutes total. Mm -hmm. But in that, you know, you'll have introductions for like five to 10 minutes. And maybe in the last five minutes, they want you to ask questions. Mm -hmm. So typically, you'll have around 25 minutes to, to go through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, time management is also important. Um, it's something that you can get only with practice. There's no other way. Um, yeah, so typically on the phone, it will be around 25 minutes. On-site, you might get a little bit more time, because on-site rounds are for an hour. Mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, most of the companies that I mentioned, they will do like only one question in like a whole hour. Or if you have, um, if you have a quest, like if you want to better manage your time, ask them in the interview. When they start asking you the question, uh, you can be like, hey, like how many questions are we gonna discuss today so that I can better manage my time? It's always it's always uh, okay to ask them. Situation where you are interviewing a company and you have multiple products. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you, like, would you recommend understanding um, all of their product offerings? Like, for example, Facebook, um, this particular example was Messenger, but they also have groups, mm -hmm. they have Instagram, and within Instagram they have like, a multitude of features. Yeah. So is it in your interest to be familiar with all of them before, in, in preparation for the interview, or is that... I mean, you will stand out if you know all of them. <laughs> But it's impossible, right? Because these companies have literally millions of products. And within mes Messenger, there are, I can list out like a thousand features, right? Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's, it's always helpful to be at least, oh, you know, have a high level idea of what product offerings they have. Um, but it's not expected of you. You can always ask them. You can be like, you know, if, if it's an, especially if it's a new product, like, I don't know, Facebook dating. You can always ask them, like, what does it do? What, you know, how does it work? And where is it launched? You can, all, you can ask these questions so that uh, um, you can have like, an idea of it. Um, that, but that said, that will come only if they are asking you to improve something. right? But if it's like a brand new thing, then you don't necessarily need to know their product offerings. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's it helps, but it's not expected. I think the question is how do interviewers compare to different candidates mm -hmm. with their uh, with respect to their answers, yeah. right? Um, I don't think there is a I don't think there's like a scorecard. <laughs> Um, different companies do it differently. Again, you know, again, I can't talk about my current company, but you know, we have like an internal set of guidelines of how we are supposed to evaluate candidates. Uh, but it, by no means, it's uh, a scorecard of how many things are you hitting from this list, right? It's it's all about um, whether you're following the structure, any structure, not this structure, whether you're following a proper structure, whether you have structured thinking, whether you are, uh, whether you're able to put yourself in the customer's shoes, and whether you, your solutions actually um, tie back to the customer. And, um, and some of the other things that I mentioned, like, you know, are you able to think of multiple ways to solve something? Are you able to, uh, are you comfortable with coming up with trade-offs, are you comfortable with the concept of trade-offs, right? Because it's it's not very comfortable to think about um, these limitations, right? But are you comfortable with that? Are you uh, okay with uh, uh, you know acknowledging that you can have trade-offs and then you will solve them? So, um, so yeah, it's it's an overall you know. Uh, basically what it sounds like, product sense. Like they're testing whether you have enough product sense um, to be a good product manager or not. And evaluation depends on a lot of things. Like it depends on which level you're applying for. If you're applying for an entry level product manager, then you know the level of um, uh, depth that they expect from an answer is different from like a senior or a lead product manager because then you're expected to you know touch other things as well not just this list but you might also want to talk about the organizational aspect if you're like a lead product manager right so it depends on a lot of things um, and uh, are you are you asking because everybody knows this framework so why can't everyone answer yeah no I'm just saying like from my perspective well, from my perspective I feel like anyone could be different answers right yeah absolutely it will be different. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it, you know, you you might have heard this a million times. There is no right answer, right? right? It's not like a. Um, it's not you're you're not writing a hello world program and producing an output, right? Um, it is a. It is a lot of. Uh, again, you know, like structure and if you can think analytically, if you can like provide some, uh, uh, you know, metrics or analytics when you are solving something like this. Because there's absolutely uh, an opportunity to, to do that, right? Like if when you even choose the customer, you can talk about, oh, this is a, you know, statistic that these many customers um, use blah in US. So that's why I will choose the US and that's why I will choose this blah segment, you know, that's that's a way of showing your uh, analytical thinking. So it's you know it's not easy to do that <laughs> in an interview. When you start practicing, you'll realize how hard it is to like think about all these different aspects. Um, so it is not again, like I said, it's not a competition. I don't think any big company or like any tech company is sitting there comparing candidates. They have a set they have a set bar for that specific role, for that specific company, and they're trying to see if you raise that bar or not. They're not comparing you against the next person. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So how conversational are the interviewers during this kind of exchange? Are you expected to be the only one speaking and just kind of talking through everything? No. Are you allowed to like ask questions and they give you proper answers? Absolutely, yeah. You're absolutely allowed to ask questions at any step. And I encourage you to ask questions and uh, make sure that your interviewer hasn't dozed off <laughs> while you're speaking and giving a monologue. It shouldn't be a monologue. It should be, I mean, ideal interview should be a proper conversation where both of you are exchanging ideas and you know they are uh, giving you inputs and you're, they're nudging you in a particular direction. That's an ideal interview. Um, and. Uh, 
but you might get some interviewers who are not very conversational. You know, it just depends on your day. Um, but you should try. You should definitely try asking questions. You should ask them if they're on the same page, you know, after each step, um, so that uh, you know if you're on the right track or not. And if they say something else and, uh, you know, if they give you some uh, hints, then you should be willing to change your, uh, uh, change your path as well, you know? That's also a very good quality and also comes with practice, um, where if they're saying, you know, some interviewers are good with that, some are not, but if they're actually giving you some hints, try to catch them and, uh, ask, you know, clarify it again if you need to, and then, you know, change, change your path to like, you know, maybe change the customer segment completely if you have to, um, or, uh, if they say, hey, do you really think you know, this is the right strategy for XYZ company? Then ask them, you know, oh, can you tell me more? Like, can we do this other thing? Like, can we do, build like, a, a standalone app? Or can we like, work with a subsidiary or something like that? So, um, so yeah, you, sh you should, uh, your goal as an interviewee is to you know, have a proper conversation because uh, that's what you will do when you actually get the job, right? You're not like one person just giving, you know, ideas and coming up with solutions every day. Um, it is a collaborative effort. So that's a good quality to show in the interview, interview as well. Is it sometimes more like an audition than maybe an interview? It shouldn't be. <laughs> it should or should not be? It should not be an audition, right? Um, because this is your isn't yeah. that the activity though of the job is the brainstorming and the thinking through and questioning and you know how do we get to that and so isn't isn't that uh, a lot of the activity done on the job? Um, are you asking me if uh, interview is more like an audition or no no it, the the exercises and the scenarios mm -hmm. is. Um, and uh, is uh, you know, what would it be like to work with this person in thinking through? Oh, right, right. And, yeah, it's a uh, test. Coming yeah. Up with the, you know, examples, scenarios, options. Mm -hmm. And so, in that way, is it like an audition? <laughs> yeah, I mean, audition sounds like you're, you know, you're like testing someone and seeing if they, you know, deliver something. I, I, I would like to think of it as like, a, can I work with this person? for you know eight hours a day for the next you know two three five years and uh, can they um, have like a conversation with me and come up with like a good solution that solves our customer problems and can we reach a consensus so i would like to think of it that way <laughs> yeah so, so there is an interview uh, it's, this is a product design interview and uh, it's expected to discuss the product of the new product. Uh, but like me coming from a technical background, I mean, how is it uh, taken if that person uh, here and there dives into some technical jargons or technical words in between, mm -hmm. getting into detail like most of the developers and programmers are? So is it taken in a good stride or uh, you should just stick to the product part of it? If you want to dig into technical details, is that, uh, is that encouraged? Is that the question? OK. Um, so typically, the product design interview at um, most of these companies are you know, testing your product sense for any product. You know, it's more of a generalist uh, product interview. Um, if you are applying for a specific role, let's say you're applying for a specific infrastructure PM for Google Cloud, for example then it's absolutely expected, I guess, to t dive into the technical. No, even for PM, like you can be a PM for Google Cloud, right? Um, in that case, you can, uh, if, if they ask you something specific about a technical product, then, then you might have to dig into those technical details to even identify your customer, right? If it is, yeah, if it is for a specific role, which uh, is a very technical product and, um, and you know, to in order to like 
come up with a design, you have to t d dive into the technical details, then it is okay to do so. Uh, but if it is something like a general generalist PM interview, where they're asking you the type of questions that I had examples for, right? Like, how would you improve Messenger? How would you design like something to do X, Y, Z? Then it, you don't, you're not expected to dive into technical details um, because that's not what they're testing in that round. Probably better understand uh, the developer issues. Yeah. And what is next? So, is it going to impress that person or should we just. Uh, so, it depends on your who the interviewer is, right? Um, it's like know your audience. Um, if a PM or senior PM, lead PM, director, whoever is interviewing you for a product design interview, then I would recommend sticking to like product sense and more business focused. If it is an SDM or, or a technical person interviewing you, they usually have those rounds. Most companies have it, but they, they won't ask you these questions. They'll, ask, they'll have a set of other questions. They can ask you about like, um, you know, tell me what API you would choose or, um, or like, you know, the generic uh, popular questions in, for technical rounds are like, what happens when you type google.com? They're trying to like understand if you have that technical, you know, uh, basic knowledge or not. Because, like you said, you will be working with developers every day, uh, but that's tested in a different round, not the product design round. And whether you have that round or not depends on the role you're applying for. If they think that you need that know-how, then they will have that round. Otherwise, they won't. One more question. So, sure. Let's say you're applying for Amazon. Uh, is, it, uh, is it advisable to uh, look at products which is related to Amazon and not like some other company or some other product? Does it make sense to prepare for products which is related to that particular company in the name? Like, or is it like you should have a basic know how of product design mm -hmm. and you should? At that very moment, uh, you should be uh, you should come up with a product design there and there because it's not possible. Right? So, um, like, can you give me an example of what type of product design? Because they will ask you if they want you to design something for a specific product. Um, then they will, you know, ask you, "Hey, design something for uh, mm, Amazon Fashion, right?" Then, if you don't know what that of product offering is, then you can ask, what does Amazon Fashion do? What does the product look like? Can you tell me more about it? And then you can like, you know, um, start talking about, you know, which way you can go. Like that's where your comprehend situation step, that's where you'll typically do it. Um, but generally, people don't ask you like any specific product within a company because they know that, you know, nobody knows all these products, like only even internally, we don't know all the products within a company because there's so many. So you're not expected to know that. It's all, like I said, it always helps, you know. Um, you should have like a general, general product design uh, practice. And then if you're going for a specific company, then it always helps to research a little bit about different products that they have. But a high level understanding is more than enough. Can you give us some example of the report? The report like what specific metrics or the report no, no. Report just means like list out, just write down. Um, so cust report customer needs steps just means that uh, uh, figure out what their pain points are, what their issues are, that customers' issues are, so that you can develop solutions for that. Because like when the question is so broad, like um, how how design something so that uh, drivers don't leave Uber platform? That was a question, right? So, what are the drivers' pain points? Why uh, why are they leaving? What are their problems with Uber? You know, what are the problems with using Uber product that drivers have? So, if you list them out, then you'll know. Then you'll understand from the customer's point of view, which is in that case, customer is driver, right? customer's point of view, what their problems are, so that you can uh, come up with 
solutions for those problems. You need to like list down the performance metrics once you come up with that solution. Is that part of any of that stuff? Um, no, metrics are generally not uh, part of the product sense round. Um, they are usually part of product execution, which we will go into after this. <laughs> so maybe we should move on, and we can have more questions later if we have time. Okay. So product execution is another, you know, um, common round that you will have in different companies. So these are different types of questions, right? Like what metrics would you use to track the improvement of sense of community within Facebook groups? Or you are the PM for Facebook time, timeline. How would you measure retention? Um, or ride cancellations shot up 4.5% week or week. How do you investigate what's going on? Um, and then um, another example is if a PM says that they want to double the number of ads in newsfeed, how would you figure out if this is a good idea or not? So this is an example of a product execution question. And as you can see, they are asked in like multiple different ways. But essentially, they are testing your analytical thinking. If you can like think from, uh, if you can think about data, if you can think about metrics, and if you're comfortable with numbers. Um, and then the last question is basically uh, testing your A/B testing knowledge. If you have, you know, knowledge on A/B testing, can you can you at least talk about that? Can you at least say that? Um, if I don't know which is a better feature to build, then I will A-B test it, which is a very common thing that happens um, at any consumer product company, right? So these are different things because this is actually how you execute a product in a company in your real PM job. So that's why they test you, um, uh, they, they, they test your product execution abilities this way. So whatever metrics that you're talking about, you will if they ask you a question like this, then you will list down you know, different types of metrics that you will measure as a PM. So product execution, how would you tackle this? Again, framework, can't stress it enough. Um, use some type of framework, multiple frameworks available, but this is a very common uh, framework you can use for metrics. Um, it's called the pirate metric, because it sounds like a, yeah, <laughs> like a pirate is making a noise. Um, but it's an acronym. It you want to try? <laughs> yeah, people. Some people are doing it in the back. Um, so, yeah, it basically stands for acquisition, activation, retention, referral, revenue. Um, it's basically different life cycle, like different um, phases of your product life cycle, and you're measuring that. You know, when you have a new product, you will have to acquire customers. So that's how you measure acquisition. And then you have to activate them so that they start using your product actively. And then retention, you have to retain them after a certain, like after 90 days after installation, you have to retain them. They have to come back to your product. And then referral is just uh, um, how, how, you know, you have uh, organic marketing, basically. If your customers like your product enough, then they're referring it to other people. So, so that you are getting more customers. And then revenue is monetization. How do you monetize your product? So these are different like um, categories of metrics you can hit when, when they ask you a question about metrics. And what, which, which ones you choose, again, depend on the question. You know, some questions you might not uh, talk about revenue if it's not relevant. Um, like, for example, most, uh, most Facebook, uh, Interv interviews, you can ask them absolutely, but most of the products, they don't care about revenue, they care about engagement, uh, whether cust uh, their Facebook customers are using the product or not. Um, and that's just like, you know, uh, that's just how Facebook operates. So it depends on the product and like the question that they ask you. So clarify if you have, you know, question whether you should talk about revenue or not, clarify it with the interviewer, it's totally fine. Do you want me to focus on revenue and monetization? If they say yes, then talk about it, otherwise move on. So yeah, this is how you can, uh, you can like come up with different metrics for a question like uh, what the first one, what metrics would you use to track? So that's, uh, that's for a metrics type question. And this is just an example framework that you can use for uh, <coughs> 
um, a question where they ask you a, a certain XYZ metric dropped, um, investigate why. So it's a very common PM execution, product execution question they ask you. Um, because as a PM, you, you own your product, right? You are the owner, you are the sole owner of it, and you own the success and the failure of your product. So even though you will have data analysts, data scientists, BIEs um, in your company that are actually measuring these things, actually like you know building these dashboards, it's your job to own those numbers and figure out if something goes down, then you need to know why so that you can fix it because you know it's hurting your customers. So you have to uh, you have to be aware of that. So if you uh, have to be aware of that, then you, you need to know how to investigate it, right? That's why they ask you these questions. So yeah, you can go through this uh, structure and uh, see like, you know, different things that you can explore to get to the root cause. It's just a root cause tree, basically. You know, what, can, what could have happened that your uh, week over week engagement has dropped? I'm, going, I'm not gonna talk about each step. You can like look it over. And uh, if you have time, we can do a mock on this question so that you can practice this. <coughs> so these are different re resources that uh, I recommend. Um, you, can, um, you can pick up any of those books, Cracking the PM Interview by, by Gail. It, it's very popular. She also wrote Cracking the Coding Interview, so she, she is very popular in the tech space. And then uh, Decode and Conquer by Lois Lynn. And then the product manager interview by also Lewis Lin. Um, and then you can uh, listen to the audio book, which is on Audible or any, anywhere else, called the Lean Product Playbook. Um, there's also a hard copy of that, but I listen to the audio book, you know, like just while doing laundry or going for a run, you know, just doing anything boring, you can just, you know, listen to it. Um, so that uh, it's you know running in the back of your mind, and you're just thinking about uh, different uh, product management frameworks and like the best practices and all of that. And it's very helpful for interviews as well. And then mock interviews, of course, product school. Since we're here, <laughs> yeah, Brian um, will tell you all about how to use their Slack channel. Um, so you can like you know find partners on Slack channel. You can find each other and uh, you know practice PM interviews on uh, on on Product School Slack or Pramp. Um, I can give out this uh, slides later. I might have to modify it a little bit, but once you get them, there's a link there. You can you know click into that link and sign up for Pramp. Uh, I believe you'll get like an extra interview with that with that link. Um, so same thing, you can find uh, partners on that platform and you can schedule time with them and you can interview each other. And then pminterview.slack.com, that is by Lewis Lin. It's a very, very active Slack, the most active Slack channel that I've found after product school, <laughs> maybe. Um, so you can, you can uh, find a lot of partners there, they're always you know, pinging and asking about availability and they'll talk about what companies they're interviewing for so that you can, you know, find a mutual fit. And then Stellar Peers, same thing. You can, you know, there's a calendar that, very easy to use calendar that you can use where you can schedule your time and then if anybody else is free at the same time, they'll just put their name on it. And uh, it automatically sends you an email with the Hangouts link. So you know, you just click on the Hangouts and, you know, that person is there at that time. So it's, it's very easy to use. And productmanagementexercise.com, that's, uh, that's not a partner finding tool, but it just um, is a tool where there are a bunch of these most frequently asked questions and you can, you know, write your own answer there so that you're just practicing yourself and uh, people will provide feedback if they have it. So these are all the different resources you have. Um, Personally, even if you don't read any of the books, forget the audio book, but do not forget to do the mock interviews. I've done that mistake myself. I read Cracking the PM Interview and walked straight into a PM interview, and I bombed it. <laughs> so do not recommend that. Um, even if you don't read the you know, books, it's fine. 
maybe this uh, presentation today was you know helpful enough that you start practicing and start thinking in that way so yeah those are all the different resources available yeah right. I don't think they have different principles. They just have different frameworks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's good to have those options, right? It's always good to have different frameworks so that if you don't like one, you just pick another one. Uh, but ultimately, they are all talking about the same thing. They're all talking about, you know, know who your customer is and uh, pain points, solutions, trade-offs, blah, 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 the whole thing. Um, I, if you ask me personally, of course, I talked about Circle's framework, so I would say Decor and Conquer was very helpful for me because it has like the most um, useful frameworks that I liked personally. But um, but you can pick any one, or you can make up your own, right? You can just get the gist of it and just make up your own framework, and uh, that's fine too. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. That's my LinkedIn. Feel free to add me and uh, email me if you have any further questions. <laughs>